Hi there. My name is Ari Eckhaus, and I'm a second year PhD student here at the University of Michigan's Plasma Dynamics and Electric Propulsion Laboratory. My research focuses on electron cyclotron resonance magnetic nozzle thrusters, or ECR thrusters for short. It's been a while since we talked about ECR thrusters on this channel, so let's go ahead and give a refresher as to how they work and how they fit into the electric propulsion landscape. As you may know from watching other videos on this channel, electric propulsion systems generally have two goals. First is to ionize a gas and generate a plasma discharge. The second is to accelerate that plasma, ejecting it at high speeds to create a thrust force. Let's talk about each of these steps in the context of ECR thrusters. Fundamentally, ECR thrusters generate a plasma using microwaves. That's not exactly what I meant by microwave. Allow me to explain. Instead, ECR thrusters rely on a principle called electron cyclotron resonance, which we can envision using one of these, old paddle ball games. So in my left hand, imagine that the ball is the electron, and the paddle is the oscillating electric field generated by our electromagnetic wave. If the frequency at which the wave is oscillating is too slow, or too fast, we won't effectively couple energy to our electrons. But if we are able to tune the frequency of our electromagnetic wave just right, we can achieve the desired resonance reaction and effectively deposit energy into our electrons. For our particular thruster, this happens to be in the microwave regime of the electromagnetic wave spectrum. Our paddle ball example is very similar to what's happening in an ECR thruster, but there's a twist. Electrons are actually orbiting magnetic field lines, so this whole process is happening in circular motion, more like this. These electrons that are heated through ECR then collide with neighboring gas atoms, knocking off other electrons and creating positively charged ions. This is how ECR thrusters maintain a plasma discharge. But the question then becomes, how do they accelerate it? The type of ECR thruster we study here at Pebble utilizes a magnetic nozzle architecture. Let's take a look at a cross section of the thruster to understand how this works. Here you can see the permanent magnets at the back of the thruster, shown in gray. The magnetic field is then represented by the black dashed lines. Within the thruster, we have our source region, where the plasma is made using the ECR reaction we just talked about. You can see the electrons shown in red and ions shown in blue. Downstream of the source region, the magnetic field diverges, creating our magnetic nozzle effect. During operation, the electrons that are heated through ECR are directed downstream by the magnetic nozzle, leaving behind the heavy, cold ions. The separation of charge establishes an electric field, which then serves to accelerate the ions downstream towards the electrons at speeds of nearly 10 kilometers per second. It's the acceleration and eventual ejection of these ions that is the primary thrust generation mechanism in these devices. Great, now we know how ECR thrusters work. But why do we care? Well, the answer is small satellites. As we can see from this graph, last year, over half of the world's rocket launches were accompanied by a small satellite payload. Now, what I mean by small satellite is a satellite about the size of a microwave. Yeah, that's actually the right kind of microwave this time. Good job. These small satellites are becoming increasingly capable of performing scientific missions. However, they present unique challenges when it comes to designing a propulsion system. They require something that is low power, reliable, capable, and relatively simple to operate. And as you probably guessed by now, that's exactly the market niche that ECR thrusters are hoping to fill. So then why don't all small satellites fly ECR thrusters? Great question. Well, the truth is we need to make this technology more capable and more reliable before it actually makes sense to fly in space. And the best way to do that is to understand the fundamental physics. And that's where we come in. Here at Pebble, our goal is to understand how the thruster responds to things like changing the wall material, changing the propellant gas, and changing the vacuum facility. The hope is that these experiments will better inform future design decisions for ECR thrusters so that we can continue to advance this technology and one day make it so that these thrusters do fly on every small sat. ECR thrusters are an incredibly promising technology and I'm very excited that I get to research them and I hope that you enjoyed learning about them. Thank you for your attention and I invite you to explore more of Pepple's YouTube channel to learn about some of the other exciting EP systems that we work on here.